What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here. Delarose.com. That's D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. Go down to the link in the description below and get a free graphic novel from me. This is Fly Me to the Moon. It is a romance manga by Kenjiro Hata, who also does this series I found out in the back of this book called uh, Hayate the Combat Butler, which I've never read, so I have no idea uh, if that's any good. This story uh, started out in volume one with a, a mysterious girl who, like, you know, we don't know if she's an angel she, from the moon, we figure, because there's something weird about her, uh, and she just kind of shows up, and then uh, he, the, the main character vows to marry her, and then uh, does in the middle of the book, and then it becomes a slice-of-life drama of a married couple who really doesn't know each other at that point. And it continues from that point here. Uh, awkward romance stuff uh, where they're like, oh, I guess we'd better... Uh, you know, do our marriage thing, and they don't have a bath in there or whatever, so they go to a bathhouse. And he actually makes uh pulls you out of it and does these like fourth wall breaks where it's like every anime and manga has to go to a bathhouse at some point, and and actually mocks the the audience for uh you know wanting lewd stuff uh, and and actually does not do any lewd stuff uh, in here. So, um, it's it's very tasteful stuff. Uh, very, very sparse uh, sort of drawing style, I would say. He has a um, he has a, uh, a simplistic style that works very, very well. I actually enjoy the look of this quite a bit. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. But we learn a little bit more about the girl over the course of this volume here. And we learn about uh, our main protagonist's past, too, because he actually, uh, I guess, was liked by the uh, owner's daughter, who is now the owner of the bathhouse. And, uh, and kind of didn't know it. And so he makes some comments about her being cute and his new wife gets really upset because she's a girl and she doesn't like other girls being cute. So you get that little tension and drama in there. But it really doesn't develop a lot of like that like mystery that it almost felt science fiction-y in, in book one. Like she's, like I said, from the moon or an angel or something. She's not. Um, we, don't, we don't get any of that. And we learn that she, like, comes from a family where she was adopted. Again, just a mystery, but it really doesn't go into it much. And uh, there's a little sister who's an adopted sister who is jealous of this whole situation. And unfortunately, uh, it does go into, like, that whole, like, oh, she, you know, stunning and brave uh, lesbian scenes. Um, so that girl has her maids attempt to seduce the husband, and they don't. And he's very faithful to her, which is good. So I'm glad that that's actually the case. I actually love these uh, these little chapter drawings where they're a little more done out with the shading and all that. It actually uh, really amplifies his art really well. Um, and she fakes a picture with him uh, in order to try to make him look like he's cheating. And uh, our gal doesn't buy it because she's innocent and she knows. So there's a weird moon rock situation going on. And uh, that's, uh, that's all we know. It doesn't really go too much into it again. I really want to develop that a little bit more because I, I feel like, you know, at, at this point in volume two, we should at least have those plot threads going somewhere, and they don't seem to be. Uh, so that, that is one thing about this. And it gets back into cutesy sluts of life without all of that again. And, um, you know, he's like, oh, I never got you a ring or had a real ceremony, and we should do that. And they kind of they get into that. They, they There's a lewd point where they... It's not, they don't show any lewd stuff, but they, they insinuate it that um, uh, he wants to go to the adult video store to, to get some hentai to get her in the mood. And uh, they, they kind of laugh that off. And he doesn't have a TV, cutesy, cutesy slice of life stuff. So they did the hentai shop. They did the, uh, they did the uh, bathhouse, you know, <laughs> is what it is. But... That's it. I, I really, like, wasn't as impressed with this one as the first one. The first one I thought had a really strong start. Um, but then I then it, when it settled into that slice of life, it kind of, it was all right. And I, I enjoyed it, and I thought it was cute. But this really needed something more to pick up uh, those, those plot threads and actually keep you invested in the gal. And I don't think her being adopted by some rich family... Uh, was really what I was looking for uh, based on, you know, what was kind of set up in the first volume. So it didn't really feel fulfilling on that end. I'll probably give it one more volume, but after that, I don't know at this point. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as enamored with this as I was with the first volume when I got to it. 
there's just simply better stuff out there. So this is like a, I would guess like a six out of 10. So if you know my average rating is a seven, I, I, I rate this slightly below average. I still like the art, even on the simple side. And it was pretty fast to go through. There's a couple cute scenarios, but it's, it's just not doing it for me this time. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you soon.